listen to the tree. The tree tells you what it wants to be. This one wants to be a formal upright. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to go from a formal cascade. A cascade. A cascade is characterized by a main trunk that is bent all the way down, curling around and then the lowest part of the tree, somewhere here. Feels like just yesterday that I created a bonsai out of a Christmas tree. Yet here we are again, another one of the leftover trees. This one actually with a lot of dead materials. It's early January, perfect time for me to wire this out. This is a Pizzea Glauca Perfecta. Don't need the label. The trunk can be bent without any branches, but normally it will have a little canopy sitting over the cascading part. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wire out the whole trunk. Well, first of all, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to remove all the branches on one side, wire it, bend it down in a snaking shape, and then in spring, I'll pull it up. So now step one is actually define what will be my main branch later on that fills the top of the tree. So I'm going to look for a low trunk here. There are a few very low ones, but I need a strong side branch, something like this. This is a nice side branch. It has lots of side branches itself and therefore can quite nicely form the upper canopy. If I take this, that means that everything below this can go because there's not going to be any branches below it except for maybe one or two at the base. But before I do this, I'm going to take it out of the pot. I'm going to remove the top soil, see where the roots are, and then clean out all this little stuff. If you look at the tree here, there's all these little branches that come off the main trunk. I'm not going to use all those, certainly not when they're dead. easy the pot is completely filled with roots and the roots are frozen so I can't go any further down than this um, let's just say that I've reached the base here and if not I'll find that out when I'm actually repotting it in spring oh. yeah really frozen oh well so I'm a little bit shocked with how frozen this still is but still I'm still going to do it so I said right lower branches are gone these two I keep as the upper canopy then this is all going to be bent down so I'm not going to use all this material that's here in the front because it's the front of the tree and I don't want any branches on the front of the tree in the lower half something like this then I'm going to remove well pretty much a third, maybe even two thirds of all the branches. I'm trying to keep the longer ones. I'm removing all these very small ones. I'm removing everything that has dead material inside. And I want alternating patterns that I keep some branches on the right, some on the left, not at the same height and some in the back as well. Um, I'm not going to be too aggressive in the pruning. I later on want to have the option to select different branches. So I'm just going to take some out, giving me some space to wire later on. Lots of branches here on top of each other. Now what you'll find is that there's all these little branches here at the connection with the main trunk. These all can go. So clean out all these connection points as well. Um, sometimes even the first small side branch. This way you get a very nice clean trunk line with individual branches that you can then later on wire out. I'm not going to thin these yet, but they will be, need to be thinned as well of old needles, but also of side branches, because there's lots of bar branches in here. But for now, I'm just cleaning out the trunk line, removing all the small stuff. A lot of the tree is gone. And look, this is quite pliable, right? Here I can make a 90 degree angle, 
without any problems. Trying to do that here is already more difficult. Trying to do that here will probably cause it to break. So what I need to do is I need to wrap the trunk with something that prevents the individual fibers of the wood to break out of the trunk. Now, normally I'd use raffia, but I don't actually have any pre-soaked raffia. It is zero degrees in here. It's cold. I don't want to work with the wet stuff right now. So I have this, what is it? I think it is coconut fiber. And I'm going to just wrap this very tightly around the trunk. Quite important to get this nice and tight on the trunk. Avoid putting branches in there. At some point I might actually have to start clipping this stuff and create really a nice tight bandaging. And after I've done that, I'm going to tape it up with a black tape, also very tightly. I need to take care that I move it in between the individual branches. And that way I create a bandaging around the weak trunk so that the trunk can't really break out of it. So from here onwards, everything is quite flexible, so I'm not too concerned anymore. But now you also know why I wanted this to be quite clean. Now here at the end, I can just cut it open and put a single knot. And then later on when I've taped it up, it is all connected in place and nothing will happen to it anymore. So this is just electrician's tape with fibers in it, which will now just tighten the whole composition up, tighten this canvas against the trunk. Now for wiring, normally I'd say let's take copper wire, but in this case I have some old 5mm aluminium wire that I'm not really using and it's easier to work with. So let's do this in five mils of aluminium. Might need two of them because this is still, it is a young tree, but not so young that it will very easily bend in that curves that I want for this. Uh, about one and a half times the length of the tree. Let's see whether we can still secure the wire here in the soil, even though it's frozen. That should work. Keep in mind which direction you're going to bend. I'm going to bend it away and around. So the wire should go also away and around in this direction. This way it will tighten as I bend it which will get me a stronger connection. Now the benefit of the soil being frozen is that now this is very, very stable and I can very low to the ground already put the wire on. Now, of course, the trick is to try and make the curves so that I don't squeeze off any branches, particularly not this one, because this is the one which I said was going to be my main canopy later on. I try to put the wire above all the side branches so that I can move the side branches down later on. Hope I'm not making a mistake in my thinking now. I think I've mentioned it in other videos. I really don't like working with this thick wire. I prefer to grow branches out rather than bend very thick material. And if I bend it, I prefer to use guy wires. Here in the top, five millimeters, of course, way too thick. So I'm just going to clip the end off. Now let's see whether it still wants to bend. Um, this one and this one can both be the top, but this could be a nice 
back branch so this is going to be the top this is going to go up and around and as said the soil is nice and nice and frozen so i can now actually try to bend it all the way at the soil line and now we're going to see whether the five millimeters is enough or whether i'm going to have to add it doesn't stay by itself here at the bottom i'm going to add a second layer of wire and what you can tell is i've left space between the wrappings this will aid in better supporting the tree against breakage I guess now it is clear why all the bandaging was important and why the thick wire. Right, now what I've done you can tell trunk has been curved all the way down then it comes forward it moves backwards it comes forward down and back to the front so basically this is the lowest part of the trunk and later on I'm going to take the top here I'm going to wire that out as well and make these branches here come down twist the tree up a little bit so it comes over with the first branch roughly here but for now all I can do is go through and see whether there's branches that point downward and that really come from the bottom of the trunk like this one is really coming down there's one here from an awkward angle on the inside remove that one and what this will do is by removing these awkward branches the plant can put more energy in the branches that remain and therefore there's a bigger chance of them surviving um, I do realize now the tree has had quite a lot of work done to it so for now, this really is all the styling that I'm going to do to this tree. And I'm just going to let it be for a couple of weeks, if not months. And now I just need to wait for the tree to deal with this. This is a lot to handle. So now I'm just going to let it be. I could wire it out, but why risk it, right? This is a big thing for the tree. In the end, it will be planted up somewhere like this. So this end, I'm not sure what I'm going to keep it. It could be that I'm just clipping it off right there. And then I have a fairly formal cascading Picea. So we've made it till February. The plant is still looking good. The buds are swelling. There's no more frost and it is still raining. I've put the plant tipped a little bit in another pot. So it has the final position. And this is roughly what I think the tree will look like. Now it's just a matter of, I've started it doing already. Um, I have already started, I'm pulling off the old needles a little bit so I can more easily wire it. And I'm looking at some of these branches. Now, if you look here, this is the back of the tree. You see here branches going completely down. This one I'm going to remove, but this one I might want to use later on as a falling branch. I'll leave it on for now. Another thing that you see is that these were of course vertical branches with a lot of green here at the end and very little in the form of growth here on the inside. So I'm going to thin these out so that I don't have these big clumps anymore. I'll leave sideways branches, branches pointing downwards I'm going to remove and I'm going to prune them back just a little bit. But I'm going to leave a little bit more foliage than what I think I'll need so that these can gain strength and then later I can cut them back to the right length. So the tree might look a little bit bushy. Of course, twin branches, two branches at the same spot. One of them needs to go. I'm using one and a half millimeters of aluminium and as usual, I'm wiring two branches with one piece of wire, looping the wire around the main trunk all the way until it reaches the position where I need it. Can be a little bit tricky to do that. Going up, going up, and this is the branch that I want to wire with it. 
small lower branches keeps sure, make sure that you don't break them just like that also here I'll need to thin out a little bit because there's way too many branches I'm not gonna need all of these as always try to get a nice distribution from left to the right back and front so that you don't have a boring simple print structure as said it's best to remove most of the needles but as this plant has been gone uh, as this plant has been treated quite badly I have put serious bends here in the main trunk I'm leaving quite a lot of needles on just means that I'll have to unwire and rewire later this year but I'll probably have to do that anyway and what I'm after of course is a trunk and a side branch I want a side branch here and I have something going up and to the side and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist this round so that I have this here in the back and this comes to become the top now I have little branches here this is the top and a side branch So this is it for this season, now I'm going to just put it outside again and in a couple of months when it warms up even further and the buds are really swelling, so April probably, I'm going to repot it in a small cascading pot. I have this pot still standing around, it is a little bit on the large side for this tree, so I'm going to fill it to one third of large kernel pumice that drains well and the roots will not use it all that much then it only has one hole so attached a thick wire at the bottom thinner wires to it and a mesh in the bottom let's get this all potted up I'm going to clean out the root ball fill this halfway up plant it in easy peasy It's getting very very windy out here so I'm just going to do this work um, you of course know how this works right I'm just gently with a chopstick and also with this root hook teasing out all the organics from the root ball trying to get as much of the organics out I'm not going to wash it out I'm just going to completely open up the root ball and then I'm just going to place it in a pot and fill it with substrate unless there's something very special to show you which I doubt I'm just going to do this work, switch off the camera. I'm going to find the bottom of the main trunk. It might very well be that it sits a lot deeper than where I think it is. But I hope I will be lucky and find the Nabari quite shallow. So I'm back and that is because something interesting did happen. If you look here, all the top roots are nice and in place of where I want the Nabari to be. But then there's a very long bare section and this is the original root ball. This is how it was grown and they just potted it up very, very deep. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to plant it up so tall. I'm actually removing some of these wires, hoping that the trunk shape will stay. Yep, that's okay. And now I am going to put a wire here around the trunk quite tightly in the hope that as this grows and matures, the trunk swells up. Cutting off 
supply to these roots and the top roots hopefully develop stronger. I'm not going to do any root pruning on this. I'm just going to plant it up. But first, let's add this wire. Now working on a tree, having the camera run and making sure that I don't block your view is a little bit tricky. So this is basically what I'm doing. I'm just taking this wire. I'm avoiding all the roots that are higher up from getting locked in. So I need to pull those up. And then a wire goes around the trunk multiple times. So this is once. And I'm just going to loop it around a couple of times and I'll be then right back. And now it's just a matter of getting these wires nicely intertwined, right? Just grabbing the ends. And at some point I might get them too tight and the wire breaks, but as long as it doesn't break and the wires come disconnected, that's not a problem. I want it to be short anyway. But this should be do. Going to cut it short. And then I can just plant it in the container as usual. Now it's a matter of getting all the roots in the pot and then filling it up with substrate. And of course using the four wires to really hold it down. And it needs to go deep enough so that these top surface roots actually get into the substrate. So they can really develop just like this. And pushing all the roots down. As mentioned, I haven't really pruned any of them. So I have a nice lot of hold here to put these wires in. And here I really want those surface roots to not get broken. And now the hardest, trying to get all this chopstick in, because of course there's a lot of open spaces because the root ball was so open and I didn't prune it. This will take a couple of minutes to really get everything in place. Again, making sure that these high up roots are all really sticking underneath the substrate. Well, and there we have it. I'm going to water this down and then I'm going to just put it in the garden. And yeah, I did a lot of damage to the roots, I'm afraid. I do think I got all the substrate in all the way to the bottom. Should be okay. Well, it's the middle of May. It's doing really, really well. You can see there's good extension growth here of about an inch, two and a half, three centimeters. And in the branches, the first new buds are occurring. But what I find most interesting about this tree right now, this of course was the top of the tree a year ago. It was a straight spruce. Now I've cascaded it, but the tree has not realized yet that this top is no longer the top of the tree. So you see that the response here of the branch that was the lowest branch on the tree, and that was of course therefore weaker, has been quite weak. There's not a lot of regrowth. But the lowest branch, the cascading branch now, which was the top, has really, really grown well. Now what I could do, I could now start pruning back and thinning out, but I'm not going to. I want to let this tree recover for the rest of the year, and in fall or late winter, I'll do another pruning. By that time, the top will have realized, hey, I'm actually the top. I am not the lowest branch on the tree. This will be a little bit weaker, but until that time, this mass of foliage will encourage this lower, this lower part of the trunk to really stay fit and healthy. Really, really happy with this result. I'm going to leave you with that. Just a final remark. This wire is going to stay on for at least another year. That is the time that the trunk will take minimum to set. I might have to remove it and rewire again in a year's time, but for now I'm just going to leave it on, just like all the other wires. There are a few dead needles, but that was to be expected. It is just going to sit in semi-shade. I am treating this quite carefully because it has been dealing with a lot. But as you can see, a happy tree. This is also something you could do with a spruce from a garden center that you just get after a Christmas sill. So keep your minds open. Don't limit yourself just by the options that the tree shows. Although it is of course a lot easier for the tree to just take the trunk line as it is. Just prune back to a branch that you want to use and then style that. But to get creative, trees can take a lot if you know how to properly treat them afterwards. This was Jelle, growing bonsai, converting a Christmas tree in a cascade. Who would have thought? See you next time and keep growing bonsai.